when I'm not watching endless Apex cards or hours of old fights researching for this channel, I like to relax by completely ignoring mixed martial arts. And one of my favorite ways to do that is watching lost media YouTube videos. This hugely popular genre is all about shows, songs, or any media really at all that we know exists, but for one reason or another, is no longer available to consume because it's been scrubbed from the web or isn't available to purchase or was maybe never even released. So I thought it would be fun to look at what we've lost in the brief history of MMA. I'm Tommy from MMA On Point, a massive thank you to our channel Hall of Famers, and these are 10 curious cases of lost MMA media. Number 10, MMA TV shows. We'll kick things off in a place you would very much expect to see some media lost that has a surprising bit randomly preserved, and that would be television shows that cover mixed martial arts. There have been a few major ones over the years, like Inside MMA, UFC Tonight, and MMA Uncensored, all of which survive in some capacity online, which still makes them lost media as not all of it is available for consumption, except weirdly the single season of MMA Uncensored. The Spike TV show most famously hosted by Luke Thomas has been preserved in its entirety on Apple TV+. No worries if you don't have that service, though. You can buy it on Prime for $51.99. Inside MMA, which was partially preserved on YouTube, has had all its content wiped since Invicta took over the channel, with only a few rando uploads from fans here and there still existing. Surprisingly, the Microsoft Store does have four seasons available to purchase for 40 bucks a pop. What is going on? But that still doesn't cover the vast majority of that show's run. As for UFC Tonight, the show I was on for a few years, pretty much non-existent outside clips uploaded to the now-abandoned Fox UFC YouTube channel. Hell, even IMDb doesn't bother to keep up. It lists 33 episodes when the show ran nearly the entirety of the UFC Fox deal. And then there's the ones you forgot about. MMA Live, where we first got John Anik. UFC Ultimate Insider, another John Anik show. Lots of missing John Anik. All these shows had really compelling interviews and analysis, and the vast majority of it is just gone forever. Our sport is young, but we're already doing a terrible job of preserving it. Number 9. Fedor's Most Famous Quote If there's one thing that Fedor is not known for, it's talking. Maybe he's just chatting it up back in Russia, but here in the US and during his extensive stint in Japan, a huge part of Emelianenko's mystique was that he was this untalkative stoic. One quote, though, would be shared and reshared countless times for its chill message. It read, Years ago, we hardly had anything to eat. Now I earn more money, and I see every opponent as a man that tries to put me back in that poorer period. That man has to be eliminated. Pretty badass, right? But did he really say it? For years, I questioned the validity of this quote because it was seemingly sourceless. But after some forum sleuthing, I managed to find an underground forum thread about the quote from 2005, which linked to a SureDog forum post that had the original link to the interview. Unfortunately, said SureDog post isn't even a accessible via the Wayback Machine, but it does confirm that the quote originated from physical media passed out at a Bushido Europe event in 2005. The famous quote is incomplete though, as Fedor goes on to say after that man has to be eliminated, in a decent pride way of course. Obviously a bit is lost in translation there, but you get the point. Good guy Fedor is always a good guy, you know? But yeah, unless somebody happens to have media from a Bushido Europe event in 2005, I'm thinking the original interview is lost media forever. Number 8. The IF flatline broadcast. You gotta remember that the tough boom didn't just mean big business for the UFC. A bunch of different promotions popped up in that era to try and make their way in the suddenly popular MMA space. And one such promotion was the IFL, which actually had some pretty cool stuff about it. They paid the fighters salaries to train, they had health insurance, unfortunately it was structured in teams, and they had like basketball jerseys, which I never understood. The fights were pretty solid though. The promotion began a run on television in 2007 with its Battleground series, and Man oh man did episode 1 piss off a ton of people in the community. Mind you, this is right after MMA has finally hit the mainstream, and so sensationalizing the violence the entire episode, like playing the sound of a heart rate monitor flatlining when a fighter is choked out, as well as laying into fighters getting carried out on stretchers, it was a bad look. I mean, you had Frank Shamrock talking about how fighters are gonna go to the death. It was all very UFC 1993, and the 2007 culture of MMA wasn't having it. The backlash was so heavy the promotions could Commissioner Kurt Otto got on a now-lost MMA Weekly radio show to apologize and promise change. And they did. The sensationalizing was no longer present in the replay broadcast or later episodes. And so while there is a seller on eBay that will sell you a few random IFL episodes released by HDNet for $150, save your money because even though he has episode one, it is not the same as what aired that day that got everyone in an uproar. Number seven, Dana White's vlogs. If there's anything that Dana White loves more than fighting, it's filming himself 
himself just doing the random shit he does day to day, and for the longest time, the UFC president had a very popular vlog series that he would post online on Fight Weeks, kind of a precursor to both Embedded and Dana White's looking for a fight. He would do non-event vlogs as well if he had anything interesting to say, and boy did he if you're familiar with the Loretta Hunt incident. Whoever gave you that quote is a pussy, and a f***ing f***ing and a f***ing liar, you f***ing dumb bitch, f*** you Loretta Hunt. You seem stressed. You wanna suck some squishy? But seemingly out of nowhere in 2009, all the vlogs were deleted from YouTube. When asked about this by Yahoo's Kevin Ioli, White essentially said that the vlogs were a bad look with the economic downturn, and he didn't think he should keep doing them. But he did almost immediately afterwards. And while those two have been scrubbed from YouTube, every vlog since starting back up after that initial 2009 purge remains viewable on Fight Pass if you're interested. But what about everything prior? Nope, it seems that either when they were removed from YouTube, there were no backups to later upload to Fight pass, or for one reason or another, they chose not to include anything prior to that first vlog cleanse. Either way, there's a ton of footage of Dana White doing Dana White things post Tough Boom that are simply lost forever now. Number 6, Heroes de Hingi. Okay, for the sake of Brazilians watching and just all of your ears, I will be calling Heroes de Hingi Heroes of the Ring for the rest of this entry. You are welcome. Heroes of the Ring was insanely ahead of its time. It was live Valet Tudo on television. Yeah, eat your heart out UFC, this beat you by like 30 years years. These Valley Tudo events, which would be put on by the legendary Gracie family, of course, aired on TV Continental, and it is with that information that the agreement about this program ends. There are different start dates depending on the source, ranging from 1960 to 1962. They say Heroes of the Ring ran anywhere from a single broadcast to two years to over a decade. Seriously, the information is all over the damn place. Some sources say there was a pro wrestling show of the same name in the 70s and 80s. Best I could gather, at some point the Gracie version of the show was kicked off the air because of the violence. I would love to get a hold of somebody in the family and really do a deep dive on this landmark broadcast, but that's a project for a more extensive video. What is abundantly clear though is that even if Heroes of the Ring was a single event on television only, which I do not believe is the case, the broadcast or broadcasts are missing, which isn't too hard to believe considering when they aired. You couldn't hit record on your VHS player because it hadn't been invented yet. Not to mention if TV Continental didn't bother to preserve these broadcasts themselves, they are likely just entirely gone to history. Number 5. Ultimate Athlete Biker Riot You know your promotion is obscure when they don't have a tapology page, but Ultimate Athlete is really only known for two things anyway. Nick Diaz's first career loss, which on tapology is listed as having happened at a California regional, and this biker riot that I'm about to tell you about. So a fellow by the name of Rick Slayton was fighting Russian Leo Pavlushkin as the seventh bout of UA2 The Gathering. A fitting name because a whole bunch of Mongols, a vicious biker gang, were gathered at the event to watch watched their buddy Rick throw down. When Slayton was admonished by the referee for an illegal knee to the junk, the biker gang in attendance started chucking beer bottles into the ring. It is at this point that the footage of said fight pauses with the message, due to crowd disturbance, this bout was ended. It was ruled a no contest and the event ended early. Which is a funny way of saying that a full on biker riot broke out, one guy got stabbed, and the police had to assist in ending the event early in riot gear with tear gas and rifles. Unfortunately, the the raw footage of this absolutely bonkers scene has never surfaced, as Ultimate Athlete would go out of business just two events later. But I would imagine the Riverside County Sheriff's Department might have a copy if you ask for it. Number 4. Pre-Pride Now if you've watched any Pride FC on Fight Pass, or even checked out the Best of Pride back when it used to air on Spike TV after Zufa bought the promotion, you know that the videos are not the best quality. Some are literally DVD rips, and a part of that was the chaos of trying to get the catalog from the sinking ship that was DSC at the time of the fall of Pride. But that is not what this entry is about. Although those original quality Fuji TV broadcasts are rare, if not impossible to find. No, I want to talk about pre-Pride. What is pre-Pride, you ask? It was a reality show where fighters competed for a chance to fight for Pride FC that had famous coaches teaching the up-and-coming fighters. Man, what a tough ripoff, right? Wrong! This started in 2001 and ran for six seasons. Starting to wonder where superfan Joe Silva got the idea to pitch the Ultimate Fighter. The show is about as lost media as it gets. There are a few terrible quality clips on YouTube to at least confirm that it happened, and that is just about it. Without any kind of DVD or VHS distribution, the show's existence today would rely solely on anybody who had managed to record it back when it aired, which would explain why none of the six seasons of this show appear to be anywhere on the internet or for purchase. Number 3. The Connor vs. Polly Sparring Tape Here's an obscure bit of trivia for you. Connor McGregor and Floyd Mayweather boxed each other in 2017. 
Yep, flew right under the radar that fight, and in the build-up, Connor famously had a few spars with former boxing champ Polly Malinaji. He might have had more than a few, but Polly bailed on the camp after McGregor released pics and a short clip that appeared to show Malinaji getting knocked down. With various accounts of the spar coming out in the aftermath and since, this session has reached mythological status over the years. It's all very stupid and very combat sports. In 2018, Netflix released a documentary about the Notorious that was supposed to finally show us the full spar, but we only got a tiny snippet, and considering it was 12 rounds, yeah, I can't imagine that they'd break in the middle of a documentary for a full fight. Regardless, the not knowing for sure only made fans more interested in seeing it, even if by most accounts, Connor did get the better of Pauly on that day. This would eventually lead hilariously to Malinaji losing a bare-knuckle boxing match to Artem Lobov, but that's a story for another day. As far as the full fight goes, the footage is definitely out there, but for now, it's probably sitting in a safe on a yacht somewhere. Number 2. The UFC London Brawl It is one of the most legendary tales in all of UFC history. A big, wild brawl outside a London nightclub that featured huge stars like Chuck Liddell and Tito Ortiz. What makes this a cornerstone of MMA lore beyond that, though, is that notoriously, Ortiz, who was the face of the promotion and light heavyweight champion at the time, was allegedly knocked out by a small-time local fighter named Lee Murray in the middle of the skirmish. This story has taken on even more mythical status now that Murray, who did end up having a single UFC bout a few years later, is in prison for masterminding the biggest cash heist in British history. Now, we don't have time to get into the many accounts of this brawl, and believe me, there are many, but important to this list is two things. One, Pat Militich, who was there, claims that Dana White told him they were pulling the security footage from the nightclub to see what happened. This video has never emerged, if it even exists. There was likely not a camera in that alley based on my research, but documentarian Bobby Razik, who was following Ortiz at the time for a film he was making, did in fact film portions of this legendary street fight. Razik has never released the footage, and he has stated that it doesn't contain the specific moment where Ortiz was supposedly dropped, but any footage of this seminal MMA urban legend would be hugely significant, does in fact exist, and is unavailable for us to see. Number 1. The Hicks and Anjo Tape One of the great achievements in the career of Hicks and Gracie was winning the Valley Tudo Japan 1994 one-night tournament. The victory sparked a ton of interest in Hickson by the Japanese pro wrestling community, known for putting on shoot-style matches and being the toughest guys in the room. Wrestling legend Nobuhiko Takada, the head of the UWFI, wanted to take Gracie on in a worked bout in his promotion, because nothing says I'm tougher than you than a predetermined finish. Hickson declined, prompting a stablemate of Takada known as Yoji Anjo to call Gracie out as well. When the challenge fell on deaf ears, Anjo flew a group of Japanese media out to Hickson's gym in Southern California to issue the challenge in person. This time, Gracie accepted and beat the brakes off Takata's boy. The media were barred from entering, but were allowed to take pictures of the aftermath. Now, the Gracies have long said, and it's been confirmed by outside sources, that they themselves filmed the bout and showed it at least once in Japan to a select group to disprove the claims Anjo later made that the entire gym jumped him. This video has taken on legendary status over the years, but for one reason or another, has never been released to the public by the Gracies, which I admit is unusual since they love publicity, but enough folks outside the clan have verified its existence, so it's out there somewhere, and maybe one day it'll surface. Man, this was a fun video. I love Lost Media. Massive thank you to the editor of this video, Max Randall. It's hard doing an edit on something that doesn't exist, and he nailed it. Please follow him on all his socials, and check out his YouTube channel. A massive shout to Ben C for the video idea. Ben is a channel hall of famer, which I thank all of you as well. You can be one just like Ben by hitting the join button, and it's a new low price of $7.99. Lots of awesome exclusive content, please check it out. And if not, liking and subscribing would be great as well. What other lost media is out there for mixed martial arts? Please let me know in the comments, I would love to hear about it. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. I am gonna get lost myself.